Another session we do is on pulses paradoxes. Um, it's one of the, the, those exam findings that, uh, or exam techniques that's really great and really helpful at the bedside, and we make sure that every resident knows how to do it. Um, I think everybody here knows the mechanism of pulses paradox, but if you don't mind, I'm just going to briefly just go over it. Um, so when someone has cardiac tamponade, searching for pulses paradoxes can uh, be very sensitive and specific for making a diagnosis of cardiac tamponade. Um, normally, if you don't have fluid around the heart, as you take a deep breath in, more blood goes into the right ventricle, and a lot of that uh, increased pressure is transmitted uh, in the ventricular walls. But if you had cardiac tamponade, that pressure can't be transmitted to the uh, right ventricular walls and the right atria, and it gets transmitted through the intraventricular septum and causes an increased pressure in the left ventricle and decreased volume going in there. So naturally what happens is, as you take a deep breath in, your blood pressure goes down more than it would normally uh, if you didn't have fluid around the heart. So what we're going to do is uh, just demonstrate how to measure for pulses paradoxes, and we're actually going to give John pulses paradoxes and measure that again and show how we pick it up. He's going to survive. So thank you. Poonam is going to help us with holding. So normally for pulses paradoxes, all you need is a, a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff. But when we demonstrate it, we actually use a Doppler instead of the stethoscope so we can put the sounds up on the, in the whole room. Great. OK. Yeah, left arm works, whatever you like. So we'll put the... Where's the easier with? Sure, we can do the right no, side too. Whichever you think. Yeah, those are, those are your left arm, I guess. Okay. All righty. So when you're doing this, instead of a, with a stethoscope, you don't have to put it too high, but with the Doppler, you want to bring the, the cup up a little bit higher so there's room for the probe to go. And if you can, you can do this with as one, just one person, but in general, it's better for two people because as you inflate the cuff, your mo the cuff gets bigger and sometimes it pushes the probe away from the artery and you lose the sound. So it's good to have someone whose job is pretty much dedicated towards looking, uh, towards holding the probe. And I can hold that for you. Okay. So what I'll do is we want to get a camera on this guy. Maybe I can hold it. put it there. Can I get you to... Actually, maybe we sh yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Okay. So what we'll do first is we're going to just measure him in normal, without, without pulses paradoxes, we're just going to measure his blood pressure. So what we expect to see here is his blood pressure, what we're trying to do is list, get this blood pressure where it first starts to appear. The court cough sound first starts to appear. And what should happen is when you first hear it and you take a deep breath in, it goes away, right? Because the blood pressure dropped a little bit as you took that deep breath. Then we want to keep going down by fives to the point where the blood pressure, the sounds are consistent. And that's that second reading. So the difference between those two readings, where you first hear the cork cough sound and, where you're, and it goes away when you breathe in, versus when you hear it again and it's persistent despite breathing, should be less than 10. That's normal. Try that. You want to hold, you can hold that? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Wait for it to go away. John's blood pressure is a little high right now. Totally understandable. <laughs> So 155 is gone. So let's get it back at 150. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath in. So it goes away. So about 150, 150 to say it goes. You see that at 145, it's persistent. Do you guys see it go away at 155? Deep breath in. Big deep breath in. See it go away at 150 here, and it comes back when he breathes in. So it's a little hard to see now. We just like to show you what's normal. We're going to make it easier to see in a second. We're going to give him pulses paradox. It'll be easy to tell the difference. We'll give you a quick break. I'm going to get a straw. 
you guys know the situations where you get pulses paradoxes? So cardiac tamponade, really bad constricted pericarditis. A few other ones, one of them is in a, an asthma attack or COPD exacerbation. The reason why is you're just creating such negative intrathoracic pressures. By taking the deep breath in, you're causing more blood to go into the right side and just less blood can go to the left side and you're dropping your pressures more. And so we're going to mimic an asthma exacerbation in John by having him breathe through a straw in and out. All right. <laughs> so uh, I may not be as vigorous as last time uh, when we were practicing this. We got, we got it pretty, pretty high before, but I, I may not go that bad. Yeah, our residents tend to turn this into a competition to see how big the numbers they can make it. I should note, uh, when we go to small groups, uh, simply not using a straw and taking big deep breaths in, you can make that pressure good. So if you don't have to both your straw, please don't if, if you don't trust your ability to stay upright after doing so. Okay, good. Let me turn it 90 degrees. See that? So I'm going to go down by 5 or 10 and just keep checking to see if he's. 120, let's try 100. It it's still goes away a little bit, but it's starting to come back. So about 95 for sure, it'd still be persistent. So it's still, okay, you can stop, thank you. All right, thank you. Sorry about. So about 140 to 95, and so uh, that's exactly what you do if someone, if you have a patient on the inpatient setting and they're tachycardic, they're short of breath, maybe you hear, you hear distant sounds, right? You can throw an ultrasound on there and see fluid around the heart. Then we do pulses paradoxes. We know immediately if they're in uh, cardiac tamponade or not. So these are the types of things we want our residents and, and doctors to know at the bedside. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.